And now here, on page 622, the Rambam now starts to talk about the meaning of the, of the, um, the commandments. Now, I admit at the outset, the way he talks about the meaning of the commandments here, and also, and he has a very long section preceding where we are now in the guide, um, where he lays out the meanings of all the various commandments, every single commandment, um, some of them in groups. Um, I admit it's not satisfying. In other words, when, 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 or when I want to go and try to get into the details, like the, the, what's significant about the commandments, I don't go to the Rambam, I go to the Zohar. Um, but if I want to have a sense of what the, 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 the structure and logic of, of the life of commandments is about altogether, not the only thing it's about, but an important thing it's about, I go to this chapter in the Rambam. And that is to say, um, it's too universal for me. It's too rational. I want more gritty, detailed, uh, sensual understanding of the details of, of the mitzvot, of why, of why filling goes on your left arm and why if this one's covered and this, and the one on your head is, is, uh, revealed. Um, for that, uh, you know, I looked at the Kabbalah or looked at, there are other, other obviously sources that deal with that kind of thing too. But none of those sources give the kind of convincing, compelling overview that I feel like the Rambam does. So the Rambam says, how do you get to that place where you see the world in the right way so that you become the right kind of person? Well, the Rambam says, first of all, as we've seen throughout all this stuff, you have to interpret Judaism correctly. If you're, if you're going to do the Jewish thing, I think the Rambam thinks you could probably do fine as a Muslim also. That's about it. I think if you're a Christian, uh, you're no good. And, uh, that's, and any other religion beyond that, forget it. But at least if you're a Muslim, you're probably all right. But if you're a Jew, you need to read this stuff right. You need to know that God is the prime mover. You need to know that Talmud Torah, you know, the study of Torah, the Hagita Bo Yomam Belayla, that you're supposed to focus on you know, day and night, that that's all about intellect and truth, right? You need to know what that's about. Um, you need to know that the commandments are ultimately rational and they're ultimately seeking to bring the society to redemption and so forth. But once you know all that, right? Once you know all that, what do you need to do? You need to structure your mind, says the Rambam, right? So you need to internalize the picture of the world, the story about the world, the, 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 the you know, the, according to the, we, we live a story that God created the world and he did it in six days and he rested on the seventh day. So we live, we work for six days and we rest on the seventh day. And he commanded us to put on tefillin, so we put on tefillin. He brought us out of Egypt. So, so we don't, so we don't oppress the stranger. Um, and he's present in the in the temple, and so we we sanctify the, the the area around the temple and the temple itself. That is to say, if you read the Jewish the holy Jewish story right, says the Rambam, it's painting for you the picture that I'm telling you you're supposed to believe in. He says, if you if you if you understand this story right, if you live in the Jewish world, this this the universe according to the Jews, then says the Rambam, you'll see the world like. With, like I described before, constructed in such a way that you'll feel the presence of God and you'll be able to move yourself to be a, a higher kind of human creature, right? So if that's the case, then what, what, what do you need to do? You need to do the commandments with, inten with, with the right intention. And what's the right intention? First of all, is understanding all that stuff we just said. In other words, the Rambam thinks if you're among those rabbinic Jews, and there are many of them then, and there are many of them now, I think, or particularly in his time, um, that believe that God really has a body. It's just sort of like bigger and better, you know, prettier and, and, are, and you know, and it can be in two places at once, you know, and other miraculous things. Um, then I don't think Rambam thinks that your, your, your intentions are worth a whole lot and your Jewish practice isn't worth much. But if you're reading it the way he says you should be reading it, then the whole Jewish picture is sort of like a, a, a Jewish version of that universal palace of the universe that we've been describing. And in that context, what do you need to do with the commandments? You need to pay attention to them. In other words, he says, you want to realize, he says, you want to become a realized human being? You want to live with God all the time? You want to realize your potential to know truth and value and to transcend all this stuff? He says, oh yeah? So then pay attention for the, not just the first line of the Shema, but pay, pay, pay attention for the whole first two paragraphs. In other words, he's very down to earth. He's very practical, you know what I mean? And I can say from experience, if that sounds easy, try it, right? With the, yeah, the Rambam says, 
you want to move towards this great ideal of, 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 of mindfulness and, and transcendence and transformation through human consciousness, so practice focusing on the bracha that you say, on the blessing that you say, just for the time that you say the blessing. Right? And it's actually very hard to do that. And then he says, and then the next stage you can get to, if you really are moving down the path towards realization, says the Rambam, the next thing you do is whenever you're doing a religious ritual, pay attention to what you're doing, don't think about something else. Right? It's really, in the, in the, in the most basic sense, he's telling us, um, you know, it reminds me, it reminds me of Harry Potter, if you guys are into Harry Potter. In, um, what did Harry Potter have to figure out? One of the, the major things that he couldn't learn from Snape, right, was, they call it in Hebrew, was, I think it was Halatat HaKara. I don't know what it is in English. Uh, um, uh, uh, dividing off your mind. He had to divide, divide his mind off from Voldemort. You know what I mean? In other words, Harry Potter had to, in order to become what he had the potential to be, sort of like the Messiah, right? What he had to do is learn to control his mind. And that's really the hardest task of all. And that's what the Rambam says Torah Mitzvot is about. It's all this other stuff we've been talking about. But the bottom line is you want to do it? Learn to say, blessed are you, and not think about something else for those three words. Uh, and then expand that to the rest of the bracha. And then when you get that whole bracha, have intention for the next bracha too. And then the highest level that he can imagine for someone in our world, for someone that's not um, uh, of, of tremendous, tremendous perfection, like the patriarchs and Moshe, Aaron, and Miriam, then you can have the intention of, of focusing on God whenever you're doing religious stuff. And, says the Rambam, use when, however, because you, when you're alone with yourself and no one else is there and you lie awake on your bed, you should take great care. I'm on page, I'm sorry, on page 623. You should take great care during these precious times not to set your thought to work on anything other than intellectual worship consisting in nearness to God and being in His presence. Right? The Rambam says, you really want to get to the highest level of where a person can get reasonably? Not only focus on God when you're doing the mitzvot, but when you're alone. And, and, you know, every once in a while, like when I'm, when I'm hit with, you know, periods of really trying to, to implement this a little bit, I'm struck by how low it, my mind goes when I'm alone. I'm on the bus to work. I'm, I'm lying in my bed, like he says here. I'm doing whatever. Most of the time, if I catch myself, what's actually running through my head is the most pitiful kinds of totally insignificant and irritating things. And the Ramam is telling me, use that time, right? And he's and he's and he's and I think he's right on when he says that's not a beginning stage. That's like a, a, a powerful to advanced stage. Be able not only to focus on God when you're doing rituals, right? Which itself is extremely difficult, right? Focus on God when you're not doing anything. Direct your mind to that which is ultimately valuable. He would call it truth. Let's call it truth, beauty, freedom, justice. I think we know it when we see it, right? Um, and it's it, even as beautiful and as attractive and real as those things are, it's extremely difficult to direct our minds to those things as opposed to the petty, irritating things that, 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 that we're focused on most of the time. And the Rambam is saying that is where the real religious struggle is taking place. And all his grand ideas... They all begin here. Now, from here he goes in and he starts talking about the level of the patriarchs. And he talks about, I am asleep, but my heart is awake. Right? And that's the woman in the Song of Songs that, who plays Israel in the, in the classic rabbinic reading. So, I am asleep, but my heart is awake. The Rambam says there are those unique individuals. And I think, I don't know if he regarded himself as on this level. And he thinks this level is beyond, I think, what his readers are most likely capable of. But I think he presents it to give us a sense of where we're trying to go, even though we'll, we'll never get there. Um, and that is people who are really focused on ultimate value all the time. Can you imagine a person who wakes up in the morning and she lives her whole, she goes through a whole day and she goes to sleep at night and the things she feels and thinks about are really only the things that really matter. The people she loves and what they need and the world and what and, and what's true and what's beautiful. And she never thinks about crap. She never thinks about insignificant things. She never wastes her energy 
and her mind and her life on those things. Um, and the Rambam imagines a person who can do that even while taking care of, 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 of you know, uh, menial, insignificant tasks, right? And then he has a line here which, um, you know, uh, can be read as either as something, I think, very high or something very frightening, um, where he actually talks about, um, he talks about uh, people who are in such a high level like that, that even when they're, quote, talking to their wives and small children, they're really focused on God. Now, I can imagine two versions of that ideal. One is abhorrent and one is very attractive. In other words, the abhorrent one, I don't know whether he, he what, what he meant here exactly, because it's, uh, but is that you're, fo- is you're not really paying attention to your wife and small children. Obviously, the fact that your wife is not the subject addressed by the sentence, you know, that the man is being addressed, is also obviously the same kind of problematic thing as we saw before. Um, but um, uh, that, that um, it, the, the, the abhorrent version is he's really not paying attention to them. But the, the, the other version, which... Um, it's a little bit hard for me to get at with his very narrow theory of value that it's only truth, but very easy for me to get at if I expand that theory of val- value to include love and freedom and sensuality and justice and, and, and pleasure and, and relationship and all of that, is he's imagining a person, I'll go back to that woman I just imagined, that she lives her whole day only focused on what matters, so there's no problem for her being focused on God when she's talking to her husband or small children, because because she sees God in them, because she she her 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 vision of what's valuable and divine about the world includes them, right? Now the Rambam might also mean that. In other words, the Rambam might well mean that um, the person who's totally focused on God, even when talking to their wife, their wife and small children, is focusing on God through them and not really ignoring them and focusing on something else, um, and. As you'll see later on, he's going to say that morality, and it sounds like really all emotional kinds of things. I mean, not that morality is emotional. Uh, morality is really more like psychology for him. But um, that um, uh, he's going to he's going to make everything subservient to truth. And so you wonder how you could really value your relationship with your wife and children if the only thing that matters is truth. But at the same time, notice as I've mentioned before. He, he believes in a transformation of many things that we, that, that are in, in our world are sensual and therefore lower. He imagines them in a higher spiritual purified form. So think, what was the verse we quoted? I am asleep, but my heart is awake. My lover is knocking at the door, right? This is, this, this is a, a, an erotic love song, right? And he's using it as the highest image of realized human consciousness. Clearly, he doesn't mean the kind of sensual eros that we know from our lives. He means a transformed spiritual eros, but still eros in some way. So, in the same way, it could well be that when he's talking about this focusing on God, even while talking to his family, and even though he's doing menial things, you know, cleaning up, whatever, um, he, he's imagining a love, a really a love for them, and not an, a, 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 an ignoring of them, but a, a seeking God through them, through a love, which is love, that we would recognize as love, but it's a higher kind of love, purified from what he would regard as the physical animal side of love. Um, and uh, again, I'm not exactly sure what to do with it, but certainly I can see, if I read the ideal in the positive direction, how this fits in with a very compelling structure, as as at least it seems to me, up to here.